All right, 12.05 is the time right here on 950 KJR. Got an hour to go. Thanks to uh, DeMarco Farr, Petros Papadakis, for joining us on the radio show. All your phone calls at 286-9595. Website up and running at 950KJR.com, keyword softy. And uh, I got to tell you, I've been been doing a show with my buddy Huge Melons over here for about a decade or so, which, by the way, believe me, is the longest decade of my life without question. And we've always talked in the last year or so, Hugh, about getting this guy down here with us in studio We've had him on the phone, we've had him on the air with us at the VMAC, but he's never been here to the friendly confines of the KJR Softy Show studio. And here he finally is, the former head coach of the Hawks, Jim Mora. I never thought we'd finally grab him, Hugh, in this environment. Mm. I n- never thought it'd be this atmosphere that would bring you down to talk with us. How are you, man? Well, I didn't have a lot going on today, so I figured I'd <laughs> come in. Hey, I got a question for you before yeah, yeah. you just roast me with yes, questions. Yes, and, My, and uh, I can't get a word in edgewise, by the way, when he starts talking. Well, I'm here now, so that's going to just be twofold. Uh, <laughs> my son... Ryder, yes. Okay, wants to know before he said, "Dad, before you answer any questions, you need to find out why do they call him soft?" Yeah. How old is your kid? He's eleven. <laughs> he's not old enough to find out. <laughs> is it because he's a big soft guy, or is he, he's never seen you? So yeah. let me. Uh, well, you know me. You see me. What would you tell the guy? Huh? Uh, <laughs> I mean, look at this physical specimen that you are staring at right now, my friend. I mean, really, you blew it. You had plenty of opportunities to bring me in as your long snapper, your backup center. You never. How many? How many press conferences was I at? with you and I was sitting 15 feet away from you how many chances did you have to identify the greatness over here I, I should have never it. did I, it well, I should have spotted it I tell never you what I, I I always enjoyed the press conferences with you in there because it was a chance to take a dig at you he, <laughs> you know Dave right yeah, as Dave. given yeah. his, his birth name yeah. did not like me to call him Dave oh, because <laughs> uh, he wanted to make sure that when he asked a question oh. I identified it as yes softy or no uh-huh. softy or good question softy so that people down here knew that it was him that it yeah, asked yeah. the question. See, now this is where <laughs> look this, how ready he's this is what it's come. I'm getting sold out here by the former coach Ooh. of the Hawks. Well, tell me about, first of all, and I think Hugh would love to know, and everybody would, would like to know, what have the last couple of days been like for you? What was the weekend like? You know, we spoke briefly on Friday morning, uh, which I assume is when you got the news. If not, you can maybe tell that story. But what have the last couple, three, four days been like for Jim Moore? Well, I uh, got the news Friday, and we can talk about that later. And mm-hmm. then, uh, I went home and I, uh, you know, I have four ki- kids and uh, they're my main concern. And my staff is a very big concern mm-hmm. and their kids and just how to deal with all of that. Uh, so I, uh, I met my kids at the bus. My wife went to school to, to see my daughter to see if she wanted to, you know, the news had broke, how she was handling it. She said, no, I'm Lily I'm, how is yeah, Lilia, how, old, how old now? Lily is 13. Okay. okay. And Lilia, uh, you know, her first question was, how does this affect me? <laughs> Was we, it really? Yeah, are we moving? And Shannon, of course, said, no, we're not planning to move. And she says, I'm fine. I'm going back to school. My son, Cole, who's a freshman at Bellevue High, I thought this would affect him the most, uh, but it didn't. I mean, he's he said, here's his words where I'm a veteran dad. I've been through this. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. I met my kids at the bus, my two youngest, Ryder and Trey. Trey's seven. And, and uh, I was talking to Hugh on the phone, actually, when the bus pulled up, and they got off, and... Uh, I said, I have bad news, uh, or I have news. I was released by the Seahawks. And my son, Ryder, who's 11, a uh, pretty introspective young kid, he just kind of, you know, okay, Dad, all right, well, I'm sorry. You know, very, very mature of him. And my 7-year-old, Trey, said, does that mean we can move to California and go to uh, Legoland every day? <laughs> so all of their all of their reactions were uh-huh. different. And then, you know, my, my concern after my, my wife and my kids was uh, my brothers, my parents, and then my staff. You know, a lot of kids, a lot of families are affected every time that... And, that there's a change, you mm-hmm. know, at this level. And uh, I know that that happens in a lot of businesses. Uh, the difference is that this one's always played out in public, and that makes it difficult for the kids that have to go to school. And, uh, you know, most kids at school are uh, pretty empathetic, and and uh, but there's always an element that uh, wants to rib and tease, and, and I have concerns for, for the children involved in this. You know, the adults can handle it, but the kids, it's, it's difficult on them. But... Uh, that's the life we signed up for. In over the last few days, has there been? Um, that was the initial response. That was Friday. Yeah. Is there I'd been? Is there been one of your kids that you've had to take a little special yeah. time with? My seven-year-old. Interestingly that, yeah. enough, uh, Trey. Uh, Trey is a huge football fan. He's a huge Seahawk fan, and he is a huge Matt Hasselbeck fan. He thinks Matt's the greatest player that ever played football, and uh, I don't know that he understands 
he's not able to process what's going on and mm -hmm. he has become attached to me which is the greatest thing in the world for me we've just been inseparable for you know the last three days it was tough for him to go to school today now he's been upbeat and i keep asking him are you okay and yeah dad i'm good and it's just been tough on him you mm -hmm. know but we had a great weekend i uh you know i had some of the coaches over friday night or some of my former coaches <laughs> over mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. friday night saturday was filled with uh soccer uh Oh, I'm sorry. We had a basketball game so uh, Saturday morning. Then I spent six and a half hours at Lucky Strike. My two boys had their birthday parties, and we had 28 kids, so that took my mind off. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And then yesterday was about soccer and volleyball and family, and, uh, you know, we're moving on. Well, if you're if you're a Lucky Strike, then you're obviously hanging out in the public, and there's, yeah. there's people around, there's fans yeah. around. What what kind of reaction did you get from people that walked up to you? You can't believe the, uh, the, the outpouring of support I've heard uh, – from people in the public, from people uh, calling me, texting me, emailing me. I, I was telling you earlier, I've probably gotten, uh, this might be an exaggeration, a little bit of a thousand texts, emails, and mm. phone calls, and just at Lucky Strike. You know, I decided that, uh, I have my hat on today, but I decided that, uh, and when I'd go out in public as a head coach, oftentimes I'd put my hat on if I was with my kids because I felt like I wanted to devote my time to my children. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you're a public figure, people naturally want to come up to you, and that's fine. That's part yeah. of the deal i, I go through but that too a little i'm sure you do <laughs> <laughs> but i i you know we went to uh lucky strike and interestingly enough Ryder, the the 11 year old said what well, dad why don't you have your hat on i said because i'm not going to hide i'm proud i'm 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 proud of of the job that i do and and i'm proud of the way i've handled things and i'm not going to hide and uh i'm not she, i was talking with shannon and and she had a comment she says hey we're going to be nfl coach wow we're going to be a head coach in Seattle. Double wow, double yeah. great. Um, you've expressed that before, but uh, you know, you know, over these last few days, how how has that particular aspect of it been different? Well, it's been difficult. You know, this was my. Uh, you know, I don't know if we have dreams. This was uh, this was something that I was very excited about being the head coach of the football team that I grew up watching in my hometown, a town that's very special to me. Um, but it goes beyond just being the football coach here. You know, I I want to offer. Uh, what I could to the community by way of our charitable foundation mm -hmm. that Shannon worked so hard on and having a platform there to raise money for children in need. And, uh, you know, I wanted to make people proud of their football team. Um, and so, you know, from that standpoint, it's a little disappointing to see some of those opportunities maybe evaporate a little bit. Hopefully we can keep our foundation going because, you know, this is an important community to mm -hmm. us and it's, it's important that we do good work for this community. You mentioned, uh, uh, your family, and of course, your dad's a high-profile guy, uh, Jim Moore Sr. Um, I guess he's not a senior. He's not a I senior. Think all, I think we all <laughs> not, kind of know the story. Yeah, that. Who's, who's that, Frank and who's Lawrence? How is uh, he's Ernest? He's I'm, Ernest. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, you're Lawrence. Lawrence. Okay, yeah, we're, we're where did I get so, Frank from? So well, I don't know. It's the Italian, you know, the there you go. Ernesto. So. <laughs> so when you talk to Ernie, then uh, <laughs> Ernesto, what we, er, Ernesto. you probably <laughs> talked to him more than I have in the last year. By the way, Hugh and my dad have a they have a little thing going on with golf. And or they used to, you know. We uh, we've had some battles out there. Yeah. He's uh, uh, he, he's great in that regard. We've he, had you know, some good a... times together. I think the greatest night of my life in professionally was involved you, Hugh, was the night that we won our first playoff game mm -hmm. after we, you know, sent us to the NFC Championship game in Atlanta when we uh, mm -hmm. we were eleven and five. And uh, you re recall my dad coming over, and you know, my dad had not won a, a playoff game, mm -hmm. and uh, here mm -hmm. was my first playoff game, and he was just petrified that if I didn't win. Um, it was going to be, I was going to be on five and he was going to be on five or he was on six, whatever he was. And we won and he was probably the happiest guy in the world mm -hmm. that night, wasn't he, Hugh? No. Oh, I mean, oh. Hugh and my dad and Mark Patterson and Wayne Hagen, who's Tiger, who's another great friend of ours, stayed up all night drinking margaritas and smoking cigars. Of course, I had to go to bed because I had to get up and prepare for the <laughs> NFC Championship game the next Sunday. But that was a great night. In the back patio there. But, uh, but uh, yeah, no, those are great memories. And, and uh, but what, what did dad have to say? I, I mean, you know, um, you know was it? Dad was bothered. 